Right, uh, good morning all of you. So in this session, we'll have a quick uh, recap of uh, the terms used in the uh, gates, gear kinematics and gear design. Right, as I said earlier, the larger of the two gear wheels is said to be a gear and smaller one is said to be a pinion. Right, when the gear rotates, the pinion also rotates. But the direction of rotation of gear and pinion depends on uh, the type of contact. Uh, I mean, whether it is external contact or internal contact. Uh, if the two gear wheels are mated externally, then it is called external gearing. So the external gearing gives the opposite sense of rotation for both the gear wheels, gear and pinion. Internal gearing uh, develops the same sense of rotation for both gear and the pinion. So this is uh, center of gear and this is center of uh, pinion. The distance between the centers, the distance between the centers is called the center distance. Uh, this line is called the line passing through the center of gear to center of pinion is called line of centers. This is called line of centers. So, as we have uh, discussed in our earlier sessions, uh, generally the gear wheels are represented with the help of a pitch circuit, with the help of an imaginary circle called the pitch circuit. So, pitch circle is an imaginary circle where the mating of uh, two gear wheels takes place. That means the pitch, cir pitch circles of two gear wheels, both gear and pinion, will have uh, tangential contact. Will have uh, tangential contact. At the point where the pitch circles of both the gear wheels will touch, it is called a pitch point. So that means two circles of gear wheels which are in contact are known as pitch circles. Pitch circle. So this is a pitch circle of gear and this is pitch circle of pinion. These two pitch circles will have a contact, right? whether it is external contact in external gearing or internal contact in internal gearing. Then that point where the contact takes place it is called pitch point. It is called pitch point. If you draw a common tangent, if you draw a common tangent to, if you draw a common tangent to these two pitch circles, right, so this line indicates the common tangent to two pitch circles, common tangent to two pitch circles, okay, and this line of centers is the common normal to two pitch circles, right. So, the common tangent to the pitch circles is at an angle 90 degrees to the common normal to the two pitch circles. Common normal is nothing but line of centers. Line of centers. Okay. Both these lines are mutually perpendicular. Both these lines are mutually perpendicular. Okay. Now, look at this. Uh, the This is a profile of a T. Right? And this is a profile of uh, adjacent teeth, right? The circle which is uh, passing through the the top surface of the teeth, it is called addendum circle. It is called addendum circle. The circle which is passing through the the bottom portion of the teeth, the bottom portion of the teeth is called root circle or addendum circle. Okay. This is a dendrum circle and this is addendum circle. What is the difference between addendum circle and dendrum circle? The circle which is passing through the, the top surface of the teeth or the circle which is touching the top surface of all teeth is called addendum circle. Right? And on the other side, the circle which is in contact with the bottom portions of all the teeth or the circle which is passing through the bottom lines of all teeth is called dendrum circle and the other name for this circle is a root circle other name for this circle is root circle okay in between this dendrum circle and addendum circle you will find a circle called the pitch circle okay so this pitch circle is the circle where the contact of uh, mating takes place or the mating of two gear teeth takes place right 
So the pitch circle lies between adenum and duodenum circle radially, right? And this pitch circle is at a distance, or uh, the adenum circle and duodenum circle are represented uh, with respect to the pitch circles by considering certain radial distance, right? So the pitch circle is the adenum circle is outside the pitch circle. The adenum circle is inside the pitch circle. That means the diameter of adenum circle is uh, more compared to the pitch circle diameter. The diameter of the adenum circle is less compared to the diameter of the pitch circles. Right? Generally, the pitch circle diameter is uh, designated with uh, D. Right? The diameter of adenum circle is represented with the D suffix A. D A. Diameter of uh, duodenum circle is represented with DD. Now, what is the radial distance between these three circles? The radial distance. Uh, radial distance is nothing but what do you mean by radial line? If a line drawn from a point of the circumference of a circle to the center, that indicates the radius. That line is called radial line. That line is called radial line. So you will find infinite number of points on the circumference of the circuit. Obviously, you can draw infinite number of radial lines. On any of these radial lines, if you measure the distance between the pitch circle and the adenum circle, that is the radial distance or the radial difference of distance between adenum circle and pitch circle, right? That radial distance is known as addendum. That radial distance is known as addendum. Look at this. This is the radial distance between pitch circle and addendum circle. This radial distance is known as addendum. The radial distance between addendum circle and the pitch circle, sorry, the addendum circle and the pitch circle is called addendum. Okay. Addendum and addendum of a gear or the radial distance between pitch circle and the addendum circle and the duodenum circles respectively. Okay, so generally the addendum value will be considered as one module, duodenum value will be considered as 1.157 module. Generally, the duodenum value will be slightly higher compared with the adenum value for a gear. Okay, we'll see why it is uh, a slight, uh, slightly higher, right? Then, this is adenum circle, duodenum circle, adenum value, duodenum value, and pitch circle. And there is another circle, just above the duodenum circle. This circle is called the base circle. Right? The circle which is just adjacent to the, the bottommost circle on the figure is this is the base circle, right? Or this is called a clearance circle or working depth circle. There are different names for this circle. This circle is called a base circle, right? Or clearance circle or working depth circle. Right? So, this base circle is at a distance addendum from the pitch circle. Addendum from the pitch circle. That means both addendum circle and base circle or clearance circle lies at same distance on either side of the pitch circle. On either side of the pitch circle. So, one is on the outer side, another one is on the inner side. Right? So, if we consider pitch circle as the way reference, outside the pitch circle, you will have a circle called adenum circle at a distance, adenum value. Right? Inside the pitch circle, there are two circles, adenum circle and base circle. Base circle is at a radial distance of adenum and root circle or adenum circle is at a distance of adenum value from the pitch circle. Okay, that's how the four circles which represents 
the gear pro gear geometry can be defined right and apart from this we have considered two radial distance radial distance adenum and dedenum now we will consider the gear tooth terminology gear tooth terminology we just till now we have I consider the geometry of the entire gear, but now if you consider gear tooth terminology, this is a gear tooth profile. It is designed in a proper way to get effective power transmission. These gear tooth profiles either involute profiles or cycloidal profiles, which we will discuss later on, right? Then at the these profiles are connected to the the core part of the gear and at the, the top flat surface so this is this top surface is called uh, top flat surface is called uh, top land this is called top land right and in between the two gear two you will have a, a flat surface right this uh, recess portion consists of a, a flat surface this uh, flat surface once again this is called the bottom land this is called bottom land. This is a top land. This is bottom land. So you have to remember these uh, terms in uh, phase so that uh, we can easily remember addendum and addendum. Top land and bottom land. The top flat surface on the tooth is called top land. The bottom flat surface in the recess between to get to is called the bottom line okay right so this uh, surface surface of the tooth surface of the tooth this is the surface of the tooth parallel to the axis of the gate it is called tooth surface this is called tooth surface right and this tooth surface is divided into two portions base region and plank region base region and plank region right so you consider the division of gear tooth by a pitch circle right the pitch circle divides the gear tooth into two portions right so above the pitch circle portion below the pitch circle portion right the surface of the gear tooth above the pitch circle is called the face of the gear, gear tooth, gear tooth face, right? The surface of the gear tooth below the pitch circle is called the plank region or the plank surface of the gear tooth, right? Now, once again, you have two more terms, face of the gear tooth, plank of the gear tooth, okay? So, in a plane perpendicular to this tooth surface, if you consider the thickness of uh, tooth, if you consider thickness of the tooth, then it is tooth thickness. It is tooth thickness, right? So, in the same fashion, if you measure the circumferential distance or the side distance between two points on a piece circle, two points on piece circle between the two gate tooth. This is called tooth space, tooth thickness and tooth space. Tooth space represents the recess region and tooth thickness indicates the material region. Okay, is it clear? Then the width of the teeth, the width of the teeth or the length of the teeth parallel to the axis, length of the teeth parallel to the axis is called the face width of the gear face width of the gear okay so these are uh, different uh, uh, terms related to this uh, gear technology now during mating you will get uh, some more uh, uh, terms right when you consider the mating of gear to right we will have a quick uh, look on these uh, uh, definitions this circle it is an imaginary circle on gear by which pure rolling action would produce the same motion as that of actual gear right so the pressure angle 
is the angle between the common normal to the two meshing teeth at the point of contact and common tangent to two pitch circles at the pitch point. Okay, so pressure angle is the common normal to the two meshing teeth. Common normal to the two meshing teeth. We will see what do you mean by common normal to meshing two meshing teeth. If we consider meshing of two gear teeth, you can draw a common normal. The angle between this common normal and common tangent to two pitch circles, what uh, we have already considered here, right? That angle is called pressure angle. Pitch circle diameter is generally indicated with uh, D here, right? Then circular pitch. Circular pitch is nothing but the circumferential distance covered by each teeth of a gear is nothing but circular pitch. Circumferential distance is nothing but total circumference of pitch circle. That is a pi d divided by number of teeth. Circumferential distance covered by single teeth. Right? So, circumferential distance divided by total number of teeth on gear is nothing but circular pitch. It is the distance measured along the circumference of pitch circle from a point on one tooth to the corresponding point on the next tooth, which is generally distance between consecutive points, right? Then module pitch, it is the diameter per one teeth, pitch circle diameter per one teeth, or the ratio of pitch circle diameter to number of teeth on the gear is nothing but module. Module M is equal to D by D, right? D by Z. Obviously, the circular pitch is pi D by Z. Instead of D by Z, you can keep M here so that the circular pitch becomes pi M. Circular pitch becomes pi M. Okay. So, there are different module values for gas, standard modules, right? So, these are all the standards while manufacturing the uh, gates module 1 1.5 1.25 2 2.5 and so on up to 50 the second the choice for modules 1 1.125 1 1.375 1 1.75 like this these are uh, uh, two international standards for gear modules okay then another type of pitch there are uh, three varieties of pitch circular pitch module pitch and then diameter pitch right diameter pitch is defined as the ratio of number of teeth on gear to the pitch circle diameter it is just the inverse of your module pitch module is m is equal to d by z so diameter pitch pd is equal to z by d so simply you can express inverse or the reciprocal of module Okay, so speed ratio is equal to speed ratio is equal to the diameter sorry speed of the gear divided by speed of the pinion, right? Or uh, uh, speed of the pinion divided by speed of the gear. So this is also known as a gear ratio, right? Then you can easily express in terms of uh, since uh, the peripheral velocity of both uh, gears are equal, peripheral velocity V is equal to pi dn by 60. Peripheral velocity is equal to pi dn by V is equal to pi dn by 60. So, D is inversely proportional to n. What is n here? n is the speed. Right? So, speed is inversely proportional to diameters. Speed is inversely proportional to diameters okay so uh, that's why np by ng is equal to inversely proportional dg by dp but the t can be expressed d is equal to mz right diameter of gear is equal to module into number of teeth on gear so that means d is directly proportional to number of teeth so dg is directly proportional to zg obviously you can express n is inversely proportional to number of teeth and diameter okay 
so that is speed ratio then the center distance between the gear and the pinion all right so this you can easily calculate by considering uh, equation algebraic equation so center distance is equal to a radius of pitch circle of gear plus radius of pitch circle of pinion right d by 2 plus d by 2 two radii if you add these two radii you will get the center distance right look at this this radius plus this radius gives the center distance this is a dg by 2 and this is dp by 2 but the t can be expressed in terms of number of feet so m z p plus m z g by 2 and m by 2 into like this right now you can express a is equal to m into z p so you can replace z g with the z p z g can be expressed in terms of gear ratio g z g is equal to m into z p m into z p sorry g into z p so m z p is into 1 plus gear ratio by 2 that's how the center distance in the gear drives can be expressed in terms of module gear ratio and teeth on one of the gear wheels okay right then what is the gear ratio gear ratio is defined as the ratio of diameters of output gear to input gear ratio of diameters of diameters or teeth since diameter is expressed in terms of teeth d is equal to m z so output gear to input gear what is output gear let us take opinion is the output the gear is the input then dp divided by dg dp divided by dg is nothing but gear ratio okay when the input gear is smaller than output gear when the input gear is smaller than output gear that means input gear is smaller in diameter output gear is larger in diameter obviously input gear is at a pinion output gear is set to be gear okay the output torque is higher than the input torque torque power transmitted p is equal to 2 pi nt by 60 2 pi nt by 60 so if the input gear is smaller one that smaller one rotates at higher speed smaller one rotates at higher speed obviously the torque is lower, torque is lower and output gear rotates at a smaller speed, output gear rotates at a smaller speed because it is a larger one, right? So smaller speed means, lesser speed means higher torque. Since the power transmission is constant, P is equal to 2 pi nt by 60, nt must be constant. If you want to keep nt as constant, if n is higher, T must be lower. If n is lower, t must be higher. To satisfy this, smaller gear gives smaller gear gives less torque. Larger gear gives higher torque. Okay, so the output speed is lower than the input speed. So higher the gear ratio equates higher torque and lower speed. And contact ratio. Contact ratio is number of teeth in contact number of pairs of teeth in contact is said to be a contact ratio it is considered one gear teeth in contact for the simplicity but in actual practice more than one tooth is actually in contact during the engagement and therefore the load is partially shared with another pair of teeth this contact ratio is nothing but number of pairs of teeth in contact while the two gear wheels are in mating. The contact ratio generally lies between 1 to 2. That means one pair of teeth in complete engagement and the second pair is only a part of the time, part of the time in engagement. The contact ratio between 1 and 2 means the part of the time two pairs of teeth are in contact and during the remaining time only one pair of teeth in engagement. Mm -hmm.